What sets the United States apart from other nations on the earth? Is it the concentration of wealth or the prevalence of poverty, the peace and quiet, or the violence? Perhaps it's all of the above. However, there is something more. What truly distinguishes the US is its unique ability to police the world as it sees fit, regardless of the cost. Is America pushing its democracy to a breaking point by doing so? In this new series from CGTN, we delve into some of America's long-standing issues and their impact on the world. Good afternoon. On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. Less than a month after the September the 11th terror attacks in 2001, the United States launched its own offensive against Afghanistan, one of the world's poorest countries. In the following 20 years, for reasons many Afghans will never understand, hundreds of thousands of American troops were sent to their country to fight a war. داخل افغانستان شاید به بنایی که من می‌دانم که طالبان از بین ببرند و کمک برای افغانستان کرده باشند و امنیت بیارن در افغانستان. وقتی که در افغانستان آمد مردم افغانستان شاید است که چی کارهای در افغانستان کرد. با جز بدبختی، ناامنی، فقر، بیچارگی دیگه هیچی در افغانستان نبود. Instead of defeat for the Taliban, the war ended with the group returning to power 20 years after being ousted. In the meantime, hundreds of thousands of Afghan civilians had lost their lives as a direct result of the war. The United States maintained that it went into Afghanistan to maintain security. When innocents are being slaughtered, and global security in danger. We don't have to choose between standing idly by or acting on our own. But in the eyes of many Afghans, the protracted war had little to do with security. America, in the past 20 years, other than the fact that the war in Afghanistan was in Afghanistan, and the people of the Afghanistan were not able to do this. It was only because of the personal benefits of the people of Afghanistan. With the terror threat now in many places, keeping thousands of troops grounded and concentrated in just one country at a cost of billions each year makes little sense to me and to our leaders. As the war finally reached its conclusion, the world watched in real time the chaotic retreat of American troops from Kabul. While they were airlifted back to their comfortable houses in the US, countless Afghans would never see their homes again. The United Nations estimates that at least 3.5 million Afghans have been internally displaced and another 2.6 million have fled overseas. My husband and two kids, my family. Uh, February 2016, we left Afghanistan. Oh, especially this way that we came, it was very dangerous. Uh, you know, without, without any reason, uh, nobody left their own country. And when you leave, when you leave your home, your job, your country, it's very difficult, exactly. Afghanistan is just one of many countries targeted by the US over the decades in its never-ending global wars. Iraq is another. What we're giving you are facts and conclusions based on solid intelligence. We know they have weapons of mass destruction. We know they have active programs. There, there isn't any debate about it. Saddam Hussein is a homicidal dictator who is addicted to weapons of mass destruction. We cannot wait for the final proof that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. 
the US has still not found any weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. But just as they did in the case of Afghanistan, US politicians insist that the Iraq war was waged for the benefit of the Iraqi people. We fight today because Iraq now carries the hope of freedom in a vital region of the world. And the rise of democracy will be the ultimate triumph over radicalism and terror. Donald Trump, when running for the presidency, made a startling revelation. We should have never been in Iraq. We have destabilized right. the Middle East. But, they lied. Okay. They said there were weapons of mass destruction. There were none, and they knew there were none. في تقدير إن الولايات المتحدة دخلت العراق ليس كما تتحدث في عن تغيير إيجاد نظام ديمقراطي بقدر ما هي تعزيز لنظرية الهيمنة على منطقة الشرق الأوسط. والعراق يعد العقدة استراتيجية المهمة في هذه المعادلة لذلك هي جاءت لمعالجة مثل هكذا الثغرة. But after we all got disappointed of of the fake democracy, uh, in fact, I don't trust uh, freedom anymore. I don't trust this world, and I don't trust democracy, and it's all because of the Americans. Just as had happened in Afghanistan. Millions of Iraqi civilians were forced to flee their homeland and become refugees. We we're talking also about millions of other Iraqis who were injured or displaced inside the country or pushed out, the, out of the country as refugees. It's an unmitigated disaster. You know, when we talk about a country of 30 million where five or six million of the country were killed and injured and displaced. In, in, the, in a U.S. scale, that's like 50 or 60 million U.S. Americans uh, being killed or injured or displaced uh, because of a foreign invasion. They're scared, they're traumatized, they're fleeing. They don't know what the solution is, and they're not all... Next on Washington's hit list was Syria. Starting in 2011, the U.S. and its allies spent billions of dollars supporting insurgents fighting the Syrian government. Let me make something clear. The United States military doesn't do pinpricks. Even a limited strike will send a message to Assad that no other nation can deliver. The war in Syria has been going on for over a decade with still no end in sight. It has shattered the country's economy, encouraged the rise of ISIS, and uprooted millions of people. The situation remains one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world today. My parents did in the first year in, in, in the war, when the, when the war uh, started. And uh, also my brother and my sister traveling to the other countries. And uh, uh, one of them come to here to Denmark, one of one of them traveled to 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 uh, Germany, and one of them go to Austria. Austria. So all of us uh, <laughs> be refugees. At the receiving end of Syria's refugee exodus is Europe. The continent is facing a migrant crisis, which reached its height in 2015 when over a million refugees arrived there after a desperate journey fraught with danger and death. It was very cold, it was frozen. I think we could die because that cold that day. I think the degrees was uh, below zero that day when we arrived. Because it was very fast, because we have to, to fast that boat because we were, we were very afraid of the river. It was a very deep place and a big place too, and we were frozen. So we have to hurry up to, uh, to cross the river to another side. The refugee crisis has had a huge impact on Europe. 
Initially, the refugees were welcomed, but gradually the mood changed and Europe closed its borders and blocked entry. Can you imagine that uh, when uh, uh, you sleep in your uh, farm, in your house with your, with your family, and uh, one uh, big group, usually uh, male uh, groups, broke into your, your house by night. They want to charge uh, their uh, smartphones uh, to, to call the, the human uh, traffickers, uh, human smugglers, or uh, they start to eat your, uh, your food in your kitchen uh, by night. Можно понять европейцев, тех же немцев или кого-то, французов, которые живут спокойно, все улажено, и вдруг приходят люди, которых надо обеспечить всем, и которые еще нас говорят, не ходите в джинсы, не ходите в мини-юбку, они раздражают наши религиозы. Слушайте, они жили тут, вот как они живут, так они живут. Это вам может что-то не нравится там. У них есть свое понимание свободы, тоже сексуальной свободы. Оно не совпадает с вашим исламским мышлением. Но они же навяз, они агрессивные приходят. From Afghanistan to Iraq, from Libya to Syria, at least 20 million people have fled and become refugees. Some have been resettled. Many others are still without a permanent place to stay. Who destroyed the state? Who destroyed Saddam Hussein? Who destroyed the prosperous Iraq? I was in the war in Iraq, and even before the sanctions, it was a prosperous country, everything was good. Who destroyed the Libyan and killed the Maura Kadai? Who destroyed the war in Syria? The United States and their allies. В Сирии тоже Соединенные Штаты и Турция. Американцы виноваты, европейцы, они их поддерживали, ля-ля-ля, вот теперь вы ее расхлебываете. До Америки, как я уже сказал, далеко они не доплывут, а вот до вас они добрались. Flanked by ocean on both sides, the United States is largely immune to refugee crises. Former President Donald Trump was not shy about addressing the issue. The United States will not be a migrant camp and it will not be a refugee holding facility. Won't be. You look at what's happening in Europe, you look at what's happening in other places, we can't allow that to happen to the United States. Not on my watch. Over the past two decades, the U.S. has accepted around 200,000 refugees from Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria. But this is merely one hundredth of the number of people displaced in three countries that it destroyed. If the United States has largely avoided an influx of refugees from the East, it has not done so well in fending off those flooding across its southern borders. From 2018 to 2021, on average, around 400,000 people a year fled the Northern Triangle region of Central America to escape the economic hardship and gang violence plaguing their own countries, El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua. Their destination was the United States, which for many years had condemned their home countries to dire hardship through a policy of economic imperialism. However, what often awaited these refugees was another form of misery. Aquí el frío no es terrible, de verdad que sí. Aquí más que todo uno tiene que abrigarse y estar ahí metido en la casa en campaña hasta que para sin sin otros, o sea, como si fuéramos madres irresponsables no nos fuéramos traídos. Nosotros tenemos consentimiento que ellos no es para que esté pasando todo esto. This image reflects some of the most violent times in U.S. history. It shows pre-Civil War America and men on horseback hunting down slaves who have escaped from their plantations. That it, there's a reference, which is the reference to slavery, um, slave patrols who used to run and find runaway um, enslaved Africans and sometimes would chain them together. Um, if, if they caught them and they'd be on horses and you'd see the Africans chained together, um, being um, taken back to the plantations. Former U.S. President Donald Trump argued that tough border policies were needed due to the possible danger Americans faced from what he called a Central American street gang called MS-13. But it's interesting to discover 
how this gang originated. Central America's problems do directly affect the security and the well-being of our own people. And Central America is much closer to the United States than many of the world trouble spots that concern us. El Salvador is nearer to Texas than Texas is to Massachusetts. During El Salvador's civil war in the 1980s, left-wing rebels battled a US-backed right-wing government that was blamed for widespread human rights abuses. For incoming president Ronald Reagan, the perceived threat of communism trumped any concerns about human rights. It was very real in the minds of many people in the Reagan administration, the fear of the Soviet Union, the fear of advancing communism. It was the forefront of American foreign policy. This is where we were going to draw the line in the sand against the advance of Soviet-inspired communism. It was the foreign policy issue. It was on the front page every day. It was on the evening news every night. There was a huge fight in Congress about the role of the United States. So what the Reagan administration chose to do was more invisible things. Give weapons, give guns, give training. Well, you can't have a democracy with these levels of violence. You can't have a democracy if there's no civilian control over the military. Fueled by billions of dollars in U.S. military and economic aid, the war in El Salvador ground on. As the smallest country in Central America descended into a hell of violence, more and more refugees found their way to the U.S. That's when MS-13 was born. As American Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has tweeted, the US spent decades contributing to regime change and destabilization in Latin America. We can't help set someone's house on fire and then blame them for fleeing. Ironically, the refugee crises it caused are now destabilizing the US itself. Many Americans are beginning to complain much like their European counterparts, about rising crime that's creating greater political and social instability. On Christmas night 2022, three buses carrying Venezuelan migrants were driven from Texas to the home of Vice President Kamala Harris. We're committed to fixing the immigration system instead of working with us on solutions. Republicans are playing politics with human beings, using them as props. What they're doing is simply wrong. It's un-American, it's reckless. All those people in D.C. and New York were beating their chests when Trump was president, saying they were so proud to be sanctuary jurisdictions, saying how bad it was to have a secure border. The minute even a small fraction of what those border towns deal with every day is brought to their front door, they all of a sudden go berserk and they're so upset that this is happening. And it just shows you, you know, their virtue signaling is a fraud. Along with widespread drug addiction, gun violence, and a widening income gap, the immigrant crisis has become yet another issue causing deepening divisions within US society. Instead of just sending the migrants away, Shouldn't the U.S. pause for a moment, examine the roots of the crisis, and reflect on who caused it in the first place? Images may appear to be identical, but looks can be deceiving. The difference is not always obvious. It has to be discovered. There are always different sides to a story. We put the focus on the details. To see more, to understand better. CGTN.
see the difference.